Hi, my name is Tesu, and I'm behalf of my co-authors, and pleased to present our paper, Stylet, Styling the Web with Natural Language. Websites are inherently malleable, as the documents used to render these websites are accessible to end users through their browsers. This means that users can edit these documents to in turn customize the websites that they frequently browse. However, editing these documents requires knowledge and expertise of the languages used in these documents, knowledge and expertise that most end users might not have. So even if users have an intention to change a website, they cannot translate their high-level goals to the low-level code edits required. Alternatively, if users can modify websites by simply stating their high-level intentions, this would allow them to access the web's malleability to personalize and enhance their experiences on the web. Thus, in this work, we aim to allow users to customize the style of websites through a natural language. To understand how users would like to use natural language to change website styles, we conducted novice expert sessions, where the experts stylize the website based on the user's request. In these sessions, the novice would request any styling change that they wanted to see through their voice and by using their mouse to indicate which web component they wanted to change. An expert would then act as a system and make those changes in real time through a browser developer tool. We found three main findings from our study. The first finding was that users made vague and abstract requests, such as make this stand out more and more modern, where it wasn't clear what aspect of the component they wanted to change and how they wanted to change it. Despite being vague and abstract, novices wanted the expert to make more assumptions instead of asking questions. They felt that the sometimes lengthy turn thinking of questions and answers needed to clarify their intentions could be tedious, and they wanted to see what type of changes experts would make based on their assumptions. Finally, when iterating on the specifics of a change, users wanted to do so without natural language. This was because testing various values through turn taking could be frustrating. For example, when a participant wanted to increase their brightness, they had to repeatedly state more or less to get to the exact desired brightness. And based on these findings, we derived three design goals, which were then the basis of our system, Stylet, a natural language based tool for editing website styles. Stylet was implemented as a Chrome browser extension. After activating Stylet, the user can easily start making a change by clicking on the component on the website and then holding the control key while saying their request. For example, tone down this text. Stylet processes the voice requests and the component clicked by the user to produce a palette of CSS properties and values that the user can then use to edit and iterate on the component's style. The palette includes a set of three to five CSS properties that are predicted based on the user's natural language request. In the example, the user requested tone down the text, and the system predicted the five shown properties. A basic and thinner font family, a smaller font size, and a decreased font weight can all serve to de-emphasize the text. To help the user explore, experiment, and iterate with various values, the palette also presents a set of suggested values for each property. The user can then test various styles by hovering over these suggested values and applying them by clicking on them. After applying various changes, the user can then set those changes by clicking on the Confirm button, and then similarly change other components by clicking and recording requests. The styling changes are stored in the browser's memory and are reflected when the user returns to the website. To produce the CSS palettes, Stylet processes the voice recording with a natural language processing pipeline and the component clicked on by the user with a computer vision pipeline. For the voice recording, it is first transcribed with the Google Speech-to-Text API. Instead of training an NLP model from scratch, we leverage the knowledge contained in a large language model, in this case, GPT-Neo, to predict possible CSS properties for users' requests. To better guide or prompt the GPT-Neo model to perform our desired task, we employ the P-tuning technique by concatenating pseudo-tokens to the transcribed request. The GPT-Neo model then takes this concatenated result as input and generates possible CSS properties. To train the P-tuning pseudo-tokens, we constructed a dataset of 300 triplets of vague requests, CSS properties, and change directions. We collected this dataset through a process involving manual notation and automatic augmentation. For the click component, we captured it as a screenshot and passed it through a variational autoencoder to get a condensed representation of the object's visual appearance. This representation is then computationally compared to the representations of all the web components in a large-scale dataset to identify visually similar web components. 
By sampling the CSS values of these visually similar components, the user is provided with suggested values that are more contextually relevant to the component that they want to stylize. We collected our own data set of 1.7 million web components through automatic crawling. And this data set was also used to train the variational autoencoder model. To understand the effect of SELED, we conducted a comparative evaluation with 40 participants. We compared SELED against the Chrome browser's dev tools. Participants performed two tasks back to back. The first task was a well-defined task where participants were provided with a before and after image of a website and had to recreate the shown styling changes. The second task was an open-ended task where participants were given a website with basic styling and were asked to freely stylize it based on the given references. First, we wanted to understand whether Stylet users completed changes more easily and more successfully. And we found that indeed, yes. 80% of Stylet users completed the well-defined task, while only 35% of DevTools users did so. Stylet users that completed the task also completed it in 35% less time than those that completed it with DevTools. Second, we investigated whether Stylet participants were more productive or in other words, whether they made a larger number of changes in the open-ended task. We saw that while select participants made a similar number of changes, they appeared to use more diverse properties. We saw that this was due to select's interpretation of vagueness, which returned properties beyond what the user intended. Participants explored these other predicted properties, which could lead to serendipitous and creative changes, and could also help them become more familiarized with a wider variety of properties. Finally, we wanted to see the effect of each tool on self-confidence. We saw that there was an initial increase in self-confidence for both conditions. But after task two, self-confidence decreased significantly for Stylet users, but did not significantly change for DevTools users. We found that despite not succeeding in task one, DevTools users felt proud of their effort and learning during the task. And this positive self-reflective feeling continued onto task two. However, Stylet users were less self-reflective and mentioned how they felt limited by the tool's errors and its set of options. Overall, our relation demonstrated that natural language interaction can help novices acquire a new skill quickly, but the benefit of this form of interaction decreases as users become more knowledgeable. For future work, we suggest an adaptive approach of initially supporting natural language interaction to help novices learn how to perform a task. And then, as users gain more knowledge, presenting direct manipulation widgets to facilitate the act of performing the task. We believe that similar approaches could be extended to support usage of complex software and to facilitate programming learning. For more details, please check out our paper.